I'll show you. So here's the next ice. I'll actually use long division to do it. So here's P of X. Well, maybe I won't. Oh, I don't need to use long division. I got so much information here. It's easier. 5X cubed plus 5X squared plus 5X minus 6, right? So this is given. And you're asked to factor P of X. However, I say try minus 1, 1, 2, and 3 as potential zeros. So I have a hint. Look at these things. Maybe you can find factors without just trying to do it, right? Uh, 41. It's the first one, the top of the page. All right, so you guys tell me, P of minus 1, what's P of 1? What else did I say to try? P of, P of 2, P of 3, let's see what happens. So P of minus 1, plug it in, right? We get 1 plus 5 plus 5 minus 5 minus 6. Remember, minus 1 to an odd power gives me back minus 1. Minus 1 to an even power gives me 1. So that's why I get a 1 from this one and that one, but I get a minus here. That minus times minus gives me plus, and that minus just stays for the other one. Anyway, what do you got? 10, 11, minus, hey, 0. What does that mean? That means that x plus 1 is a factor. So we can factor out x plus 1 out. Now let's not try to do that just yet. Let's just, we can do it, right? How about 1? What happens when you plug in 1? 1, 1 minus 5 plus 5 plus 5 minus 6. Well, I think that's, wait a minute. Oh, is that also zero? Woohoo! So what's that mean? X minus one is factor, right? By the factor theorem. How about two? Two to the fourth is 16. Two to the third is eight. Eight times five is 40, so that's minus 40. 2 squared is 4, 4 times 5 is 20, 2 times 5 is 10, subtract 6, how's that go? Looks like I got a 30, I got a 30 plus 16, which is 46, 0, cool. So that tells me that x minus 2 is a factor, right? How about 3? Three? 3 to the 4th is 81. Three, third, 3 to the 3rd is 27. 27 times 5, 130? 135. Okay, 130, minus 135. 5 times 9, 45. 5 times 3, 15. Minus 6. All right. So, what we got? 75 plus 45 is 10, 120. That's a zero, That's a zero again. Ah, well, I guess these are all very helpful hints, aren't they? <laughs> um, I don't always do that. You know, sometimes I'll give you at least one that's not a zero, so you have to think through it, you know? Now, so what does this mean? Now we can assemble the pieces. Check it out. So P of X is equal to, well, it's got an x plus 1 factor, doesn't it? It's got an x minus 1 factor, yep. It's got a x minus 2 factor, yep. And it's got an x minus 3 factor, great. Now, generally speaking, you've got to be careful. 
there's also the possibility that there's like a number out front, like an A, right? Now, is that all there is? Look at the degree, degree 4, right? So it's degree 4, that means we can have at most four linear factors. Otherwise, when you multiply them out, you get a higher degree top term, which is impossible, right? Because x to the fourth is as big as it gets. Now, the coefficient of x to the fourth is 1. And if you think in your mind's eye about multiplying this out, right, you're going to get an x times an x times an x times an x. The coefficient of that is 1. That means that we don't, this a needs to just be 1. We can just get rid of it, and, and there you go. This is, that's it. What, what did we not have to, we never actually had to really think through factoring this directly, did we? That's the power of the factor theorem. If you have information about the polynomial, you can actually do algebra without actually doing algebra. <laughs> it's kind of a neat thing. Um, okay, so let's look at example 1.6.8. Now, you guys are not going to be bored if I review polynomial factoring in here, are you? Because I, I think it's good for you to have it done. I'm definitely not going to be able to finish in the three minutes I have today. So, like, I'm just going to have to keep on with this next couple pages, like, next time we meet. So, that's a slight modification to my schedule, but I'll, I don't know. I'll get rid of, like, word problems somewhere. If that's okay with you. Is that okay? We'll cut out some word problems later. <laughs> let's see here. So um, we have p of x. Let's try to finish this one. x cubed plus 3x squared plus x minus 5. We're supposed to factor this. Hint, p of 1 equals to 0. And x squared plus 4x plus 5 is factor of p of x. Good grief. Um, there's like nothing to do here. What on earth is the point of this example? To me it feels like, does it feel to you like there's something to do? It just feels to me like there's nothing to do, right? It's just, that's just me. How do you factor this? What does this tell you? By the factor theorem, this says that there's an x, it can factor out x minus 1, right? And what else was I told? I was told that this is a factor of p of x. So I can put this here, right? I think that's it. <laughs> we can check though, right? This times this is x cubed. This times that is minus 5. That is supposed to be minus 5. Um, how can we get x squared? We get a minus x squared like this, right? And we get a this times that gives me 4x squared minus x squared. So the x squared terms are 3x squared. Good. How do we get x? Minus 1 times 4 or 5 times x, so we get 5 minus 4, which is x. Yeah, that's it. This is a very silly in-class example. Like, it was, it was not necessary for me to tell you that x squared minus 4x plus 5, x squared plus 4x plus 5 is a factor. How could you have done it? You could have done it like this. x cubed plus 3x squared plus x minus 5. If I divide x plus 1, x minus 1 into that, I get an x squared here, so that gives me 4x squared plus x minus 5 um, plus 4x. Um, C 
See, so we could have derived that factor using division. Or you could just try to like look at it and see it, right? I mean, maybe you could just, once you know that x minus 1 is a factor, you can kind of, by process of algebra and distributive properties and such, see that what has to be left over is that x squared plus 4x plus 5, right? I mean, maybe. Now, this is the question, we'll, this is the kind of stuff we'll do next, next time we meet. We're going to talk more about what do we do with something like x squared plus 4x plus 5? When are we done factoring is the question I'm asking you guys to leave you with. This is the question I'm leaving you with. When are we done factoring? When you have no remainder. You have no remainder, okay, but can I break this down further? How do I know I can't break that into like x minus 3 times x minus whatever? Do you remember? How do we know when we can or cannot? factor a quadratic over the reals? The answer to this question is given by what? It depends on who you had for algebra. But one answer is given by completing the square. So we'll talk about that next time. And also the, just the special forms like difference of squares. And I, I want to make sure that you have a full um, you know, understanding of how we factor polynomials before we go on. It's, I think it's just a good, it's a good place for us to get started with like symbolic manipulations, right? So, and we have to do a little bit of complex numbers along the way there too. But anyway, hopefully by the end of next class we'll be done with, um, with this, uh, you know, chapter one. And then we'll, we'll go on from there. Now I already have printed out chapter one for you, but you need to print out like past that. We'll, we will be to chapter two next week. I think certainly by Wednesday we should be into chapter two. So, sound good? Have an enjoyable weekend. I have to go do this uh, advertising thing. <laughs> Did you guys, have they advertised this stuff to you? The uh, get on board?